Hi everyone, Combook Reviewer here. This time reviewing on Star Wars Django Fett Open Seasons. Now, as you know, Django Fett Open Seasons is a full issue series that tells the origin of Django Fett and how he came to be. And this was during the original Star Wars continuity, which also led up to the events of the game Star Wars Bounty Hunter, that also gave you the insight of Django Fett's backstory. And I could definitely see this being adapted on Disney+, Plus if given to the right team. So the cover has Jester Muriel with a younger Django Fett gunning things down. And the story takes place... 36 years before Attack of the Clones, we see how Count Dooku's ship lands down on an unknown planet, where he heads out, slices a tentacle creature, and ends up meeting Darth Sidious, saying, Welcome home, Lord Tyrannus. Lord Sidious, I wasn't aware that you had left Coruscant, my master. My visit will be short. I can still afford to be away, but I wanted to observe your progress personally. And they, and Count Dooku points out that he's done a lot of searching and manages to find Django Fett, who is the last of the, of the Mandalorian soldiers from the Jedi raid on Caladran, also took down the Death Watch and everything else, and even fought side by side with Jess Muriel when his planet was was invaded. And it turns out, many years ago, a sort of mercenary group known as the Death Watch that were led by Vizsla wanted to continue being Mandalorian conquerors. And we see how Jess Muriel and Mandalorians that stayed true to their cause formed another group to, to take down Death Watch. And we see Vizsla saying, You can't escape me, Jester. I'll burn all your hiding places to the ground and execute anyone who will help you. And when you have nowhere left to run, I'll have your head. And we see how, two days later, we see how a young Boba Fett, I mean Django Fett, finds foot tracks and his father points out about working on the harvester and says that he's getting food for a beggar and tells him to keep working on the harvester. <clears throat> and we see how Boba Fett is working on it, but ends up meeting Vizsla saying, Hey kid, let me see your hands. What do you want? And of course they're going to take the kid back home and find information on where Jester Muriel is. So, of course, they beat the merciful crap out of Django's dad. And we kind of see him point out that he doesn't know where he was. And, of course, we see how Boba Fett's... I mean, Django Fett's mum holds out her gun, getting ready to shoot them down. And we see Django's dad saying, Run, Django! And, of course, runs as they end up getting killed. And we see how... Jess Muriel and the other Mandalorians try and take down Fizzler's group. And of course, they mainly take Django's sister, and it had been confirmed in the original continuity that she was later taken to a mental health f facility. And we see Jess Muriel saying, Fields on fire, let's move. Your family's dead, boy. Come with us, or die here too. And of course, we see how they journey from further from the burning fields, and of course, manage to get into the water pipe system, which of course, they get out alive. And of course, we kind of see how Jess Muriel takes Django under his wings, and says, You know how to use a blaster, boy? Yeah, my dad, he taught me to shoot. Then he was a good man. The boy comes with us. And we kind of see how Fizzla and his also Death Watch group do some R&R &R to take whatever they want. So, of course, we see that the Mandalorian group show up once again to take on Vizsla's group. And, of course, we kind of see how Montross was originally one of the Mandalorians under Jester's command. <clears throat> and, 
And of course, we see how Boba Fett manages to blow up one of the tanks single-handedly. And of course, Jester saying, Vice Free Compete, pick up the smugglers. And of course, takes down some more of the other members of Death Watch. And just then, even Fizzler's right-hand man tries to take on Django Fett. And we see how Jester finds to his shock and even to his dismay that Fizzler's gone. As well as knowing the more he's alive, the more problems he'll cause. And we see how Fizzler's right-hand man says, Enough playing, child. And of course, ends up getting shot. And, he say, and we see Jester saying, You came through, Django, but we have to go now. And of course, they mainly leave off and says, Montos, we're leaving. Keep your eyes open. And a hundred credits to the soldier who secures our rod off this rock. And yeah, this is the story. I think issue one is alright, but a good start. I think if it got made into a Disney Plus series, I could see Hugh Jackman for Justin Muriel, Fen Diesel or Dwayne Johnson for Montrose. For Fizzler, I could definitely see Christian Slater. Or better yet, Gary Ullman. And I could definitely see... And I could definitely see as well for Django Fett in the issue 2, if it got adapted, the actor who played the Red Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge. So I think this issue still deserves a thumbs up. Still good, and still alright. So, comic reviewer here, signing out.